Good morning. Happy Sunday morning. Happy Sunday afternoon. Happy whatever day and whatever time of day you are watching this video. Welcome to this week's Sunday school lesson. So like I said earlier, to me, it doesn't matter what time of day or what day you are watching this. All I care is that you're here and I'm here. And so together we are going to spend a little more time jumping into our Lord's Prayer series and learning a little bit more about the Lord's Prayer and what all it has to offer and what exactly are we talking about when we say the Lord's Prayer in church every Sunday. We are going to continue that conversation. But before we jump into that, today's um, warm-up activity, if it is the morning, if you are just waking up, I invite you to maybe get some of your Sunday stretches out you know, let's just stretch it out a little bit. Let's reach up to the sky. Let's go down and touch our toes. Let's come back up, hello. I invite you guys to get some of your morning wiggles out if you're watching this in the afternoon. That's okay, you can still get your wiggles out. Never a bad time to get some wiggles out. So I invite you guys to do that. And then while we're kind of stretching our bodies, getting ready to really put on our best listening ears, I want you guys to think of one of your favorite stories that you heard growing up. So this could be like a fable or an old wives tale that somebody told you, or maybe your favorite children's book that your parents or your family read to you when you were little. Um, I want you to think of one of your favorite stories and I want you to think, is there a lesson that I got from that story? So. For example, when I was little, I know that my favorite children's book in the whole, whole world, my favorite story that my mom would read me before bedtime is The Giving Tree. I love The Giving Tree. I think it is a super sweet book. Most of you have read it. If you haven't, tell your parents I need to read The Giving Tree because it's a fantastic book. And I used to just love this story because I thought it was just a really sweet story. But then I got older and I started listening to the story a little more and I was like, there's a lesson to be learned in this story. You know, you find out the giving tree is really a story about maybe not taking advantage of people we care about or, you know, it's a story about how the people that love us will always be there for us, even if sometimes we forget to be there for them. I think it's just a really beautiful story of grace and of constant love. And so when I was reading that when I was five, I wasn't thinking about any of that. So it is cool sometimes to think about your favorite children's books, think about some of your favorite stories and think, what is the lesson I'm supposed to be getting out of this story? So I invite you, if you're watching this video with your family or with anybody else in the room, take a second to pause this video and discuss some of your favorite children's books or some of your favorite stories and maybe think to yourself, is there a lesson I'm supposed to get out of that story? And what might that lesson be? So I invite you guys to do that now and jump back in whenever you are ready. Whenever you are ready to jump back in, first of all, we are going to talk about this week's coloring page. So the coloring pages get emailed out every Sunday morning. So if you have a printer at home, you can easily print them out. Even if you don't have a printer at home and you don't have our exact coloring page for this week with you, don't worry, I will explain how you can still do this week's activity and still participate. So whether you have the coloring page or not, this is what it looks like this week. So it has the next line of the Lord's Prayer, which is, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So if it helps you guys, you can go ahead and start kind of coloring or doodling this top part that has that part of the Lord's Prayer in it. You can kind of do that while I'm talking if you would like to, if that helps you listen a little bit better. Um, feel free to go ahead and start coloring or doodling and just really meditating on your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because today we are going to talk a little bit about what exactly are we praying for when we do the Lord's Prayer. So last week we talked about who are we really praying to. So this week we're going to talk about what exactly are we praying for when we do the Lord's Prayer. So 
to get started. This is the time when I need all of you to calm your bodies, maybe doodle or work on your coloring sheet. And I need you guys to put on your very best listening ears because this is the part of the lesson where I have to talk a lot. So put on your very best listening ears. Let's calm our bodies and jump into today's lesson. And then after the lesson, I will tell you guys the fun activity that you can do today inspired by today's lesson. So let's jump on in. So let's start with realizing that we are all part of systems. So a system organizes how a group of people live together. So for example, we have family systems. So your family system includes the expectations, the rules, or the patterns affecting how you live together as a family, right? So there, you know, are certain expectations that your family has for you. There are certain rules in your household. That's how, that's your family system. That's how your family works and tries to live its best life. So that's one example of a system. We have educational systems. So an educational system is like the way schools operate and the way that they are dedicating um, are dedicated to helping students learn. And then another example is we have government systems. So our government system is like the way our country is run and the laws that our government puts into place that we need to live by. So that's like a government system. So there are also cultural systems that are equally, if not more powerful than all the other systems I just mentioned. Cultural systems are actually really important and really powerful. So in Jesus's time, the biggest system that people knew of was a kingdom. So if you paid attention in the Beatitudes Sunday School series that we completed a couple weeks ago, remember we talked a lot about what a kingdom is or what a kingdom looks like. So to revisit that really quickly, a kingdom was the system ruled by a king or in the case of Jesus's followers, their system was run by a Roman Caesar, which was like their version of a king. So it was very sad and upsetting to Jesus the way that this really large system in Rome was dividing people. So the Roman kingdom was set up to essentially help powerful people make more money and gain more power but the less privileged people became even poorer and faced even greater challenges. So that was the way their system was set up. And I don't know about you guys, but that doesn't sound like a very fair system. And Jesus kind of agreed. So the Roman kingdom was set up that way. And we see this in our systems today too sometimes, right? We see the way that um, they often help those who hold the most power, right? We see a lot of people in power getting a lot of help. And sometimes we see our system maybe harming people who don't have as much power. So it's kind of sad, but we can see some ways that our current system um, reminds us a little bit of the Roman systems back in Jesus's time. So when Jesus prays for the kingdom of God to come to earth, he is calling for God's system to change the kingdoms or systems of our world. So with God's kingdom on earth, if God's kingdom were on earth, the vulnerable, less powerful people would receive the rewards, the care, the love, and the things that they need to thrive and survive. All people would equally have joyful and full lives being treated justly and compassionately. This is God's will and this is God's dream for our communities. So because God's kind of kingdom was so different than what people were used to back in Jesus's time, because God wanted everybody to be treated fair and justly, and that wasn't what people in Jesus's time were seeing from the Roman, from the Roman government. So because of all that, when Jesus was here, he told several parables. So another word for a parable is a story. So he would tell lots of parables or stories about God's kingdom. So he used things that people would have known well back then. So stories about farming, cooking, fishing, 
in business. For example, Jesus compares God's kingdom to a mustard seed. Even though this is one of the tiniest seeds, so we've talked about the mustard seed story before. I've talked about it with some of y'all at least. Um, so, for example, the mustard seed is one of the tiniest seeds in the whole wide world. But the mustard seed grows to become this big, enormous, beautiful tree which provides shelter and food for other living things. So that image, thinking of this really tiny seed growing into this big, beautiful tree that can provide life for all kinds of nature and other life. So when we think about things like that, when we think about that image, it kind of reminds us, right, of how God's kingdom generously nourishes life and is also gentle in its power. So that small, gentle seed growing into this huge tree reminds us that God's kingdom is very generous with how it nourishes our lives, but it's also gentle in its power and how it starts, just like a super tiny mustard seed. So another example of a parable Jesus told is, um, Jesus also says the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant. So a merchant is like a person who buys and sells things. So Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is kind of like a merchant who is out looking for really valuable pork valuable pearls, excuse me. When the merchant finds a single pearl holding the most value of any pearl he's ever found, he sells everything he has and he buys that one single pearl. So one of the things that this parable shows us is the value and meaning of God's kingdom. When we discover it, when we really find the meaning and the value in God's kingdom, it is worth giving our entire lives for everything we are and everything we have to God's kingdom. So that's like what Jesus was trying to get us to learn from the story of the merchant and the pearl. He sold everything to get this one pearl. So Jesus was trying to like let us know once you discover the kingdom of God, once you find that super valuable thing that your heart has been desiring for so long, you're willing to give up everything you have to be a part of it. So praying for God's kingdom to come to earth and God's will be done teaches us how God's system transforms the hurtful systems of our world. So transformation, which is your big vocab word of this week, Transformation means changing something, taking what's there and creating something new out of it. So when we pray, your kingdom come, we commit to taking an active role in changing the unjust systems that we see around us. So our faith is more than just the ideas we believe, guys. Having faith is more than just saying like, I believe in God and I believe that Jesus died for me. Um, our faith is about movement and it's also about action. We can bring about God's dream of justice and love by sharing with one another, by listening to and learning from each other, by laughing and crying with one another and standing up for and with people that we feel have been treated wrongly. So that was this week's lesson, was to just give you guys a little bit of a snippet into what exactly parables are and what exactly are we praying for. And essentially, when we say, your kingdom come, your will be done, we are saying, God, we understand that the way the earth is working right now is not your dream and not necessarily your will. But we pray to be an active part in making your dream for our world come true. So that's really what we're saying when we say your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're saying, God, the system of heaven, the system that you want for us, where everybody gets treated fairly and justly and compassionately, we are willing to do whatever it takes to help see that vision on earth. So that's basically like what we're praying to God for when we say your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're saying, make earth look like heaven. Make earth look like the way your system designed it to be. So that's what you're praying for in that line. So 
your activity today. We talked a little bit about parables and stories and what they mean. So I think it might be kind of fun if you use all this empty blank space on your coloring page to maybe draw or write your own parable. So I want you to think of something in your life. Think of something around you that maybe represents a part of God's kingdom or a part of the system of God. So like we talked about a mustard seed, it starts out as something really tiny and it grows into something beautiful that provides life. So that helps represent, um, you know, God's power and his gentle power because it comes from that tiny mustard seed but becomes this big powerful thing. So you have the mustard seed parable example, we have the merchant selling a pearl or selling everything he had to get the pearl and the pearl represents heaven. So, you know, you have examples like that, parables like that. So I want you guys to put on your very best thinking caps and imagination hats. And I think it would be fun for you guys to try to picture your own parable and either write it, you can write it like a story or maybe draw it in pictures. I think it would be fun for you guys to get a little creative with all this blank space. And like I said, if you don't have this physical coloring page, all you need is a piece of paper and you can still write or draw your own parable. I think it would be fun for you guys to see what you can come up with um, and what kind of stories you could tell that might represent God's kingdom on earth. I think you guys can do it and I think they're going to be really cool. So I encourage you to try doing that. Also, another thing that got sent out this week um, was your take home page. This just has a little recap for your parents or your family about what we learned this week. It has some talking points and some questions in case you or your family want to talk about this anymore. And then it has a special challenge for you guys to do this week. And I really love this challenge. So we are going to do it together because I think it'd be cool if all of you tried it out, whether you have this page or not. So the challenge this week is challenge your family members to look for signs of God's kingdom throughout their day. So you can make a list of God's kingdom's attributes. So people, so if you see someone being treated with love and respect, if you see the earth receiving the care or appreciation it deserves, if you see people facing hardship, receiving help that they need, those are examples of seeing God's kingdom on earth. So I encourage you at the end of every day, maybe at dinner or at bedtime, encourage your family to share a sign of God's kingdom that you notice that day. And if you have a day where you don't really notice God's kingdom anywhere, guess what? That means that's a day where you get a chance to show somebody to show somebody God's kingdom. So Maybe you have a friend at school who is alone, or I know most of you are doing virtual school right now, but maybe you just have a friend that you know, maybe they don't have a bunch of other friends, you know they normally sit alone at lunch, things like that. You know they feel kind of left out, maybe they haven't been seeing as many friends lately, especially with all the virtual stuff. Um, so maybe you could reach out to them or write them a letter or draw them a picture, and just let them know that you're thinking of them. Anytime you and your family are going for a walk outside, you have an opportunity to pick up trash or litter and help care for the earth that was created for us. You could ask your families or ask your parents if when they're at the grocery store, maybe you guys could pick up a couple extra items and donate it to a local food bank. Um, or you can also check on members of our church, members of our parish. Um, ask, does anybody need help with anything? Can we volunteer with any of our parish families? So guys, even if there are days where you don't see or you feel like you missed seeing an example of God's kingdom, there is nothing stopping y'all from being that example for God's kingdom. So I encourage y'all, at least for this week, at the end of every day, so whether dinner time or bedtime, sometime in the evening when your day is winding down, I want you to think, where is one place that I saw an example of God's kingdom on earth today? And if you didn't see it, then I want you to think, how can I be an example of God's kingdom on earth tomorrow for somebody or for the earth or for whatever? So 
that was today's lesson. Like I said, all the take home pages and the coloring page got sent out via email. So if you guys have a printer at home and you really want that stuff, your parents and families know how to get it. I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. I always love leading them. Like I've said in the past, I hate that we can't physically be together quite yet, but even though I'm leading these through video and you're watching them as you can, it still feels like that little moment in the week where we get to be together, even if it's through a screen. So thank you for watching. Thank you for continuing to want to be a part of Sunday School. I love all of y'all. I miss you so, 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 so much. I really just miss us sitting and having Sunday School together, but we will get back there soon, as soon as it is safe for us. So Please know that I love you, I miss you. As always, if you have any questions about anything I talked about, if I maybe didn't explain something well enough or I just said something and you're kind of like, Miss Felicia, I got questions about what that means. That is totally okay, that is expected. That is a good thing to have questions about what I'm talking about. So if you do have any of those questions, I encourage you to bring those questions to your family and if your family can't answer them, reach out to me and I would love to help explain any of this any better or any more than I can for you. So know that as always, if you have any questions or needs or anything, your parents have my phone number and my email and they are more than welcome to use either anytime that y'all need it. So again, for the bazillionth time, but I'm saying it for the bazillionth time because I really, really mean it. I love you guys and I miss you and I will see y'all next week for our next Sunday school lesson. I hope you have fantastic weeks, make good choices, be good for your families. I say it every week because it's true every week. They need you to be good right now, so be good for them. And I will see y'all next Sunday. Have a fantastic week.